So I'm going to go into a video about 504, Section 504 versus ADA and how a disturbing loophole has been used by the schools. Actually, it's not a loophole. They're ignoring their duty under the ADA. Let's go into what Section 504 requires. Okay, this is... Uh, this is Kamal ISD, Kamal Independent School, School District. I'm on a case right now with a client um, at this school, and it's very disturbing what's going on, and it's just uncovering all kinds of things here. But this is the form. This is one of the forms that a parent has to sign. It's called a 504 Consent for Evaluation Form. And they sign this form so that their child can be evaluated to see if they need accommodation. This is the old form of evaluation. This is Section 504. So the, the intrusive questions that they're asking, first of all, they're asking you to give the name of the other children in the home. But they, they may already know this. But to me, it just seems like they're trying to get as much information as possible. What are some of your child's strengths? That's, that's not a, That seems like an innocuous question. What does your child do when not in school? For example, watch TV, read, part-time job, play with other children. Please describe your child's behavior at home. For example, is he or she generally well-behaved? Have there been any recent changes in behavior? How does she, uh, he or she get along with other family members, neighbors, and playmates? Some of these questions seem innocuous. What activities does the family do together? Well, there's all kinds of ways that can twist this answer. Either you don't do enough activities together or you do activities they don't approve of. And this is Texas. So are you going to get somebody who's conservative, liberal? I mean, how are they, how are they going to spend this? Either way, this is a, an, a threatening question in my mind. Uh, have any family members had learning problems? Again, may seem innocuous to some people. I don't think they need to know this. This, this should focus on the child who needs the accommodation, not the other family members. Have there been any important changes within the family during the last three years? Job changes, moves, births, deaths, illnesses, separations, divorce. I'm just telling you right now, all of this stuff can be used if somebody wants to. These people are mandatory reporters. These, these teachers and, and evaluators are mandatory reporters. And if they get information and they get some wild hair up their ass that says this kid may need to be investigated by DCFS or CPS, whatever it's called in your state. All they got to do is use this information to call CPS and say, hey, you need to start an investigation on, this, on, this pe on these people. What is your child's reaction to discipline? Now, let's go over here real quick. What methods of discipline are used with your child at home? For example, spanking, extra chores, early bedtime, rewards for good behavior. They're actually inviting you now, you may totally believe in spanking, and I'm not here to judge whether you do or not or whether you do it or not. But this could be used to assert that you assault your child. They're inviting you to answer that question and offering you the example of an assault. Just saying. In today's society, in this day and age, we got a school that's out of control, they could use that to cause all kinds of problems in your life. Compared to other children in the family, this child's development has been slower, about the same, faster. Uh, there again, I mean, I, I think it needs to focus on the, the uh, child that needs the uh, accommodation. So this is the U.S. Department of Education Office for Civil Rights, and I actually printed this to PDF so I could mark it up, but you can find this online. Here's the uh, address if you want to Look at it. Uh, we're going to get in here to question two. It talks about the ADA Amendments Act. Okay. And I'm going to hide these uh, sidebars. The Amendments Act not only amends the ADA, but also includes a conforming amendment to the Rehabilitation Act of 1973 that affects the meaning of disability in Section 504. Okay. It amends the ADA and Section 504 to broaden the potential class of persons with disabilities protected by the statutes. Okay, let's scroll down here to question number five. Uh, well, first of all, let's hit this. It significantly 
changes how the term disability is to be interpreted. Specifically, Congress directed that the definition of disability shall be construed broadly and that the ter determination of whether an individual has a disability should not demand extensive analysis. This is 42 U.S. Code 12102. It's also, uh, from memory, is 28 CFR 35.101B. Should a school district revise its policies and procedures regarding the determination of coverage and provision of services under Section 504 and Title II. Yes, if those policies and procedures do not implement the Amendments Act's new legal standards. That's a really important, really important thing there. This is said here several times. New legal standards. As noted above, the definition of disability is to be interpreted broadly, so determining whether one has a disability should not demand extensive analysis. Should not demand extensive analysis. And the determination shall be made without regard to the ameliorative uh, effects of mitigating measures. That means if you wear glasses, you still have a disability if you have uh, legally blind. The glasses don't change that. Um, they may mitigate it, but they don't change that you have a disability. If a district determines that a student has a disability under these new legal standards, here it is again. It must also evaluate whether because of the disability, the student needs special education or related services as described in the Section 504 regulation. So this all has to be under the new legal standards, though. The school district must also determine whether additional requirements are implicated under Section 504 or Title II. If a district failed to implement the changes uh, made by the Amendments Act, that district may be unlawfully denying Section 504 or Title II coverage to its students. I want you to see this. If a district failed to implement the changes made by the Amendments Act, that district may be unlawfully denying Section 504 or Title II coverage to the students. This is the Department of Education saying this. So what what am I what do I have a beef about? Right here. Should not demand extensive analysis. Okay? So in the ADA, let's go back over here to this form. In the ADA, um, a lot of the stuff that they're asking has no bearing on whether or not the child gets, has no bearing on whether the child gets ADA uh, access and, and uh, accommodation. All this stuff is extraneous. Every one of these questions is basically bullshit. What do you feel like would, I mean, I say, what do you think is causing the problem? But I don't see anything in here that says, uh, what do you feel like would cause their child to have a better access no nothing i don't see anything in here about that so really there's no request in here for reasonable modification you're leaving all this in the hands of the 504 committee okay so there's no request in here for modifications the ada says you request modifications the ada also says you shouldn't have an extensive analysis it does not demand an extensive analysis. What you're seeing here with this form is an extensive analysis and no request for modification. All of this is in the school district's hands, and it's way too burdensome and way too intrusive, way too extensive of an analysis, and it has much of it has nothing to do with disability. So what I'm the reason this came up is because I keep seeing, I keep seeing that um, these schools are pushing back when I invoke the ADA. And the only reason they're pushing back is because they have much more control under Section 504. Now, do you remember over here where it says, um, should, school, should a school district revise its policies and procedures? Yes, it should. It ha they have to meet the new legal standards, okay? So they have to uh, they have to meet this this new legal standard. And it says if it if it, if it fails to implement the changes made by the Amendments Act, that district may be unlawfully denying Section five hundred four or Title two coverage of students. When does that have to happen? Well, not, now before they start anything, they can't start it midstream and say, "Well, we complied because halfway through we we decided we were going to check and see if we were complying with the ADA." Well, no. And this right here is saying at the 504 evaluation meeting. When does that occur? 
Well, it, well, it occurs well after you sign these intrusive forms, which are non-compliant with the ADA. At the 504 evaluation meeting, they're going to ensure that the information reviewed is documented in deliberations and all 504 decisions are made based on the information reviewed, consideration of mitigating measures, and in accordance with the Americans with Disabilities Act Amendments Act of uh, 2008. Well, that's at the evaluation meeting, and they've already broken their obligation to the ADA at that point. Period. So what I'm telling you is, this is this is public school wide, United States wide, nationwide. This is going on. When you have a child with a disability, the school wants to exercise 504 authority over that child. Now let me show you this on uh, Comal. This is Comal ISD student handbook. It says parent defined. Parent defined. Throughout the code of conduct and related discipline uh, discipline policies, the term parent includes a parent, legal guardian, or other person having lawful control of the child. They actually mention the doctrine of loco parentis. That means that the teacher, the the uh, principal, whoever's in charge there, has the authority of a parent. Now, what can a parent do? Well, let's just scroll right up here, right up next page up. Okay. District administrators need to receive district administrators need to receive the consent of the student or their parents if the student's under 18. Now the, the reason for that, if the student's under 18, the, the disabilities of minority apply. And that's admitted in the Texas Education Code seven times. So they need permission from the parent or the student. Uh, if the student's under 18, they need permission from the parents to search the student's tel telephone or cell phone. Well, who's the parent? Whoever's in charge. So this, the, the school teacher can say, yeah, I give permission to search their phone. Because I'm in charge. I'm the loco parentis. And uh, I'm going to give that permission. This is all bullshit. I'm telling you right now, the school owns your child. If you don't change it. And also, they're violating the ADA every time they run a 504 evaluation process, in my opinion. I'm not a lawyer. I can't give you legal advice, but I'm telling you right now, according to what the uh, Department of Education says, they have to comply with the new legal standards. Have to comply with it. And if they fail to implement the changes made by the Americans, uh, with Disabilities Amendments Act, that district may be unlawfully denying Section 504 or Title II coverage to students. I'm here to tell you, they are failing to implement the changes. Here's another thing. If you get <clears throat> a school offering you this, today I wrote an attorney and I said, be happy to fill these out if you'll give me a written guarantee that none of the information in here will be used against a student or their parents in any setting. You think I'm going to hear back from them? Hell no. If I do, they're going to ignore that question. Because this information can be used against you. Period. Quickly and just horribly. This is a problem. And schools all over the nation are using 504 evaluations when those evaluations do not meet the removal of extensive analysis that the ADA Amendments Act of 2008 brings into existence. Just telling you.